Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here and with the current climate here in the US with uh, coronavirus, rioting, looting, uh, police budgets being slashed, all those things, a lot of people are considering moving out of major cities out into the suburbs, into small towns, and even out into the countryside. I moved to this house about a year ago from New York City. It's about an hour and a half north of the city, and I haven't looked back since. So in this video, we are gonna talk about what credit score you need to buy a house. Now, when we say buy a house, we obviously mean to get approved for a mortgage to buy that house. Obviously, if you have cash, you're not gonna need a credit score. It's just like, here's your cash, here's your house, done. One more thing as well, you may hear a British accent, but uh, we are in the United States. All of the examples and uh, you know everything we talk about in this video is gonna be US loan products, US examples, etc. Some of it may be similar to things in other countries, uh, but it is only 100% correct for the United States. So first of all, let's talk about conventional loans, which is just normal home loans from a bank. They're not insured by any special government agency, but they do conform to the requirements of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, typically you're gonna need a minimum credit score of around 620 to qualify for a conventional loan. However, some lenders won't go below 660. But don't think that if you've just qualified with like 621 or 662 or something, whatever they're looking for, um, don't think that you're all good. Because remember, the lower the credit score, the higher interest rate uh, you're gonna have to pay on that loan, okay? Right at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about what credit score you need to ensure you get the best interest rate. But first of all, let's look at some other types of loans and what credit score you're gonna need for them. Jumbo loans. These are loans for expensive houses, which require a loan over the limit set by the Federal Housing Finance Agency. And for the year 2020, these limits are $510,400 for a single family home in most areas, and a higher rate of $765,600 in higher cost areas, like Washington DC and some areas of California. Now, obviously they had to have a higher rate for California. So let's give an example in New York State, the average home price is $321,000, but in California, it's $554,000. So just the price for an average home in California is already over the limit for a conventional loan in other areas of the country and would require a jumbo loan if California didn't have a higher limit. So what credit score do you actually need for a jumbo loan? Well, in general, uh, it's gonna have to be at least 680, but in some cases, you may actually need a higher credit score than that. For example, Rocket Mortgage says that if you're putting 10% down instead of the more standard 20%, you are gonna need a credit score of around 720 to get approved for a jumbo loan. And also don't forget with a jumbo loan, you're gonna need a higher income as well because obviously your monthly payment is gonna be that much higher. So if you don't have a high income, your debt to income ratio will end up being too high for you to be improved anyway. All right, let's look at some other types of loans. FHA loans. These are loans from the Federal Housing Administration and they are aimed at low income and low credit score households to help them buy a home. Now with FHA loans, you can put as little as 3.5% down and that will require a credit score of 580. But if you cough up a little bit more cash and you put 10% down, you actually can have a credit score as low as 500. Now, one major disadvantage of FHA loans is that if you pay less than a 10% down payment, you will have mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. If you pay 10% or more as a down payment, you will have mortgage insurance for 11 years. Now, if you compare that to conventional loans with mortgage insurance, okay, for people who put less than 20% down, normally the mortgage insurance will come off once you own more than 20% equity in the property, but with FHA loans, it doesn't. So with an FHA loan, the only way to get rid of mortgage insurance would be to refinance once you own more than 20% of the property. Now, this depends on what the interest rates are doing in the future though, as to whether it's really gonna work out as saving you money or not. Okay, let's move on to VA loans. These are loans for current or former military service members, and the eligibility is pretty broad. So most people who have been in the military should probably be eligible for these. I'll put the eligibility requirements from the Veterans Affairs website in a link uh, in a comment below if you guys wanna check it out. Now the big advantage of VA loans is you don't need to put any money down depending on the price of the house. If you're borrowing a lot of money then you might need to put some money down. But under certain circumstances, 
zero down payment, which is awesome. Their interest rates also tend to be a bit lower than FHA loans and you don't need mortgage insurance because it's insured by the VA, but there is a VA fee that you have to pay. I think it's 2.3%. It can be rolled into the loan though. Now the VA doesn't set a credit score for VA loans. Lenders set their own credit scores. Typically they're looking at 580 or higher, although some may require as high as 660. So the average is around 620. Next, we have USDA loans. These are loans insured by the Department of Agriculture for low and medium income families to buy homes in rural areas. The definition of rural is quite broad though, and you can actually buy homes reasonably close to large cities, in some cases, maybe 40 minutes outside of a city with a USDA loan. Like VA loans, USDA loans will also allow you to put zero money down in some circumstances. Their interest rates are better than FHA and conventional loans. So, you know, they're pretty good. Their only real limitation is that it has to be in a rural area and there are income caps uh, for it as well. If you earn over a certain amount of money, you will not be eligible for a USDA loan. Now the USDA sets a minimum credit score of 640, but in some cases there is actually some flexibility to go lower. But with USDA loans and with any loan for that matter, it's not always in your interest to go lower. And let's talk about why. And that is because the lower your credit score, the higher your interest rate. And in most cases, you need a credit score of 740 or above to get the best interest rates lenders can offer. In some cases, it's 760, but a more common highest credit score for the best interest rates is 740. And if your credit score is at 739, you'll instantly get bumped down to the second level of interest rates. That's what happened to me. I was at 739. I ended up with an interest rate of 4.5% on my mortgage. Now, obviously there were other factors at play as well, like the fact that I was self-employed and etc. So, you know, it wasn't just the credit score. If you think that 4.5% sounds a little bit high, but, uh, credit score was certainly a factor. And having a high credit score can also mean that underwriters are a little bit more lenient with the underwriting when there are certain factors they don't like. Like if you're self-employed, you know, your income is considered not as stable as someone who's W2, but if that person has a high credit score, they may not attach so much weight to that, right? They may kind of let it pass. So all in all guys, those are the minimum credit scores for each type of mortgage. Um, but remember to get the best interest rates, uh, certainly on a conventional, you're gonna need to be 740 um, or above. But having a credit score a little bit lower, um, you know, shouldn't necessarily discourage you if you do have to settle for a little bit higher of an interest rate, because remember, uh, getting on the housing ladder is an important step, okay? And you could maybe refinance at a later date, or, you know, getting on now is the difference between getting on now and maybe getting on in two or three years time. Well, you're gonna be building up equity in the property anyway, and that's valuable for you as well. So you gotta weigh it up. And when you're thinking about your credit score, do remember it's not a Credit Karma 740, it's a FICO 740 using the specific mortgage algorithm, okay? The easiest way to get it is to go to myfico.com, um, order one of their plans. You're probably gonna want the Premier plan and that gives you credit scores for mortgages, auto loans, and more, it says. Um, now this one, the Premier one updates every month, okay? Some of the other ones update every three months, so you don't want that. Uh, and when you're looking at it, you want to look at your specific credit score for a mortgage. Okay, so that's $39.95 a month. You can, of course, cancel it after you have finished using it. Um, and they've actually changed the plans recently. It used to be $60 for a one-off score. Now it's a little bit cheaper, but obviously you just have to remember to cancel uh, when you don't need it anymore. If you look at Credit Karma, um, I'll just give you an example. When I was buying my house, my Credit Karma score was at 760, but when it was pulled for a mortgage, it was at 739. So guys, good luck if you're buying a house. There are some really great mortgage products available to us here in the United States. Just remember all the ones we've mentioned in this video, I just gave you an overview. There are, of course, a few more things to consider for each one. So, you know, if you're interested in one of them, do go and do a little bit more research and uh, find out all of the key points, um, not just the ones we mentioned in this video. If you want two free stocks from the investment app Webull, it's very similar to Robinhood, uh, the link for that is down below. One of those stocks could be valued up to $1,400. Obviously, it's the luck of the draw if you get that. Uh, so I do wish you luck. Hope you get as valuable a stock as possible. All you need to do is open an account and deposit $100. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.